Hello and welcome. I'm George Elias. I'm the investigative journalist that has been breaking stories about the information war in Ukraine for the past seven years. If you want to know who's behind the run-up to war in Ukraine, you're in the right place. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We're going to do this through first person accounts. From here, we're going for a ride. So who exactly is behind the media blitz sparking all of this? Information Operations Group, SEL, have been working in Ukraine since the Orange Revolution. And now, with Joe Biden in office, they've gone back to work supporting their client's agenda for Russia and Ukraine. SCL executive manager Mark Turnbull bragged about a job subcontracted to another company in an unidentified Eastern European nation. He thought no one seemed to know they were there. They ghosted in, did the work, ghosted out, and produced really, really good material. So we have experience doing this. What would we do? Disrupt, deny, degrade, deceive, corrupt, usurp, or destroy the information. The information, please don't forget, is the ultimate objective of cyber. That will directly impact the decision-making process of the adversary's leader who is the ultimate target. The purpose of influence operations is not to provide a perspective, opinion, or lay out a policy. It is defined as the ability to make audiences think and act in a manner favorable to the mission objectives. This is done through applying perception management techniques which target the audience's emotions, motives, and reasoning. These techniques are not geared for debate. It is to overwhelm and change the target psyche. Using these techniques information sources can be manipulated. And those that write, speak, or think counter to the objective, are relegated as propaganda, ill-informed, or irrelevant. The word propaganda is frequently used to describe any news emerging from one's opponent. Used this way it's only natural that all the news coming from our side is labeled the truth regardless of what that news actually is. Second and just as important is, who is our side? In American democracy is there a room left for dissenting opinions? Should the government be taken to task for mistakes and mismanagement, due to policy moves? Russian websites outright accusing the US of supplying ammunition and other support to the rebels. I asked a friend in a position within the US, that might know more about this, he claims it is a private initiative of US citizens. Now I have a thought bouncing around inside my head which actually makes sense. But the repercussions are wild, off the charts bloody and may destroy a nation. If one looks at that graphic, natural gas pipelines run through Ukraine. If one had the talent, one could close valves in any of those pipelines and shut down a major part of Russia's exports and, therefore, a source of money, another kind of power which Putin must truly understand. Bumping this up one step, blow up those pipelines, although that is going to make one hell of a mess. This would result in a Russian invasion. End of story? No. Imagine trying to defend thousands of miles of pipeline. Ukrainian insurgents would make Russia devote dozens of divisions of soldiers. Suddenly I have 510 people in Ukraine following this blog. Images of the burning embers at the crash site recall the shocking moment the Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 was shot down. The information war for Ukraine has taken on a whole new look. Russia, you need to go down. You need to choke on your ilk. You need to feel the pain of exceeding the limits of acceptability. You need to pay. TAA is the only methodology of its type and has been verified and validated by the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, the Sandia National Laboratories, USA, and the UK's Defense Science and Technology Laboratories, DSTL. The MH17 shootdown activated the next piece of the SEL information operation. Independent researchers were needed to push the Russian invasion narrative into media, 
and into the world's psyche. Elliot Higgins went to work with SEL's Ukrainian Information Operation operatives, who in 2015 will become an intrinsic part of the DNC Act, the entire Russia-Trump collusion narrative, the Steele dossier, and Manafort's Party of Regions Black Book. It was SEL's Ukrainian informed Napalm team member Anton Pavlushko that began development of Bellingcat's information narrative. They put Russia on trial with evidence that seems to be faked Facebook posts from Ukrainian and British information operators. Over the intervening years, it became clear Bellingcat was working under SCL's Ukraine team, headed by Dmitro Zolotukin. SCL's Ukraine's Ministry of Information Policy oversaw FBI trainer Aaron Wiesberg and Bellingcat's work helping to develop Miratovitz, which is Ukraine's hit-for-hire web portal. At the same time, SCL's Bellingcat denies involvement with Joe Harding's Ukraine I.O. unit, who are working with the Atlantic Council. Eric Tobler is doing seminars with the Ministry of Information Policy to add members to their ranks. In response to all this when I confronted him, no one will care. I still engage with pro-Russian trolls on a daily basis. I've had reporters write bad stories about me on Russian news sites. I currently have a vehemently rabid anti-Western, especially anti-American troll trying to smear a group of Russian troll chasers I work with. He also publishes stories blaming us for all his woes. The difference is I have been professionally trained on how to mess up somebody's life, permanently and forever. Yeah, we were trained in special forces more on weapons, operations, tactics, and medicine but being trained in unconventional warfare does give one an advantage. Ukraine is a bright shining star. They approved the Minister of Information Policy. They received a National Information Strategy and are working on a counter-propaganda center. Wonderful news out of Ukraine. I submitted some papers to this end. I personally believe a few of my words survived. I know others involved in other parts of this effort. Minister of Information Policy Yuri Stets has five missions. This effort is geared to contain what they call Russian propaganda in the West. In late January, Ukraine's Minister of Information Policy, Yuri Stets, promised to create an information army to fight Russian propaganda. And there are many kinds of propaganda. Let me focus on what we are mostly seeing being dumped on us by Russia. I'll put them in a spreadsheet and send it to anyone wanting to help. Together we'll see if we can send that to enough people to make a case against him, embarrass him and make it impossible for his to show his face without being labeled a bad journalist, a liar, guilty of perjury, and a dirty propagandist. Photographs can be photoshopped, so can videos. Eyewitness accounts are suspect. Reporter stories are only as reliable as the news sources and that means they are not reliable. Even if the most reliable person in the world says something, their word can always be branded speculation. As the work progressed in 2015, they started targeting journalists and media platforms who spoke badly about then-candidate Hillary Clinton, who they were supporting. This would lead to the creation of proper not by the Atlantic Council for the Ministry of Information Policy, Harding founded in Ukraine. But I was having problems describing a whole of government approach, and I was having even more difficulty explaining how a whole of nation effort might be divided. We finally came up with five categories for what I might call government corporate private information activities. I am also not certain how to include discussions on content, such as a narrative. Cultural, religious, and historical considerations also may be discussed. Where would they fit in? I also can't forget the methodology of efficiency. How do we determine methods of effectiveness? Once again, the voice of my friend and mentor Dr. Dorothy Denning reminds me of this important consideration. If I take a whole-of-nation approach, then I should include marketing, public relations, perception management, reputation management, and strategic communications with a small s. What have I missed? Disinformation charter for media and bloggers. Top-down censorship should be avoided. But rival media, from Al Jazeera to the BBC, Fox and beyond, need to get together to create a charter of acceptable and unacceptable behavior. Vigorous debate and disagreement is of course to be encouraged but media organizations that practice conscious deception should be excluded from the community. A similar code can be accepted by bloggers and other online influencers. As you can clearly see, Harding and Wiesberg are the originators of the Propanaut list. Propanaut 
is an Atlantic Council production under Michael Weiss. These countries account for 81% of all the Kremlin trolls and their engaged followers. The top five countries alone account for 58%. That the USA is ranked first came as something of a surprise. Detailed analysis is ongoing, and I'm unlikely to share the findings publicly. I'm glad it works for you. My initial reaction to proper not taking the graph and making it a list was, allergic. Toxic even. But it holds up. It can be and has been reproduced. In killing him, and make no mistake about it, Putin killed him. Putin has taken on, in addition to the entire world, the Ukrainian-American diaspora. He probably thinks it's a joke. Their intellectual, material, and political resources are far greater than Putin can imagine. Be forewarned, Vlad. Diasporas have long memories. And this one will give you and your apologists in Russia and the West no rest. If you're wondering who was paying for the media censorship in the U.S. and worldwide with all these fact-checkers and with it and the censors themselves pushing the platforming and actually staffing it, well, now you know. Journalists that need to be excluded are those are side label as propagandists or active measure agents. What does it mean to be irrelevant? The following exchange was given at the Heritage Foundation in June 2014. The opinions of over 1 billion peaceful Muslims are deemed irrelevant. The opinions of over 8 million Muslim Americans are irrelevant because they also don't support the agenda to change regimes in countries like Libya, Syria, Egypt, or Yemen. George, you know my background. I will find you. They started labeling everything against the information operation as fake news. They developed fact checkers. Stop fake was the first. They became Google's fact checkers. They started deplatforming companies and social media. Adam Hunt is part of the engine that makes the best known one bot central work. They deplatformed and demonetized you. Imagine being so degenerate. You destroy the foundational freedoms from your own people. You destroy livelihoods and reputations of not just good people, good journalists, professionals, and it cuts across a lot of professions these days. And you do this for money. For a foreign country. Ukraine is a foreign country. You light the world on fire, taking it to the brink of war for diaspora nationalists in Canada and the US and feel so protected, you can be this brazen. And you do all this just because you can. Hey, how are you doing? Guess what? For the first time ever I'm being paid to do IW. I did IO for years. Ran the IO Institute and was paid for that. I ran my old informist to influence blog for 9 years and wasn't paid a penny. I started a week ago. Just an FYI, I did write a national information strategy for Ukraine. But they never adapted. I've been a writer too published by Ran, and I never controlled or even suggested to a single troll. I've consulted and advised a lot. But DOD and Congress are cheap, 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 except when passing large bills. Oh, and I've worked in cooperation with, not for, the US government, in quite a few foreign countries. Where are you now? Now that you know who's behind the build up to war in Ukraine, if you look back, the timing of the escalation and Harding's return to work coincide. What really sticks out is the fact that media has been leading political decisions and not the other way around. This is Infowar. 
So Ukraine Zelensky doesn't want Donbass back into the fold. Just a few weeks ago, Zelensky described citizens he claims to want back as subhuman. The Ukrainians, as of January 2022, are not good partners or friends to America. They are unworthy of American support. Do we want to give them the opportunity to send American kids to war so their oligarchs and our politicians can steal more? With the revelations coming out about the spying surrounding Donald Trump's White House and the campaign by Democrats, what you're going to find out and what I exposed from 2015 onward was Ukrainian involvement at the government level and Ukrainian diaspora funding and involvement in America and Canada and Australia and the UK. They want what they want for Ukraine. Their lobby is bigger than Saudi Arabia's and they are flush with money. I am an American conservative and the difference between the people here and the people in Ukraine is very, very stark. Lugansk and Donetsk, the people of Donbass, they act and react like Heartland America. That's what they remind me of, and it feels like home. Before 2014, most of Ukraine was like this. It's just the way it was. They respected people, they respected people's values, they respected people's beliefs. And now here we are. Joe Biden has got his war. What did it take to get Zelensky's Ukraine to finally move on this? Joe Biden just gave them one billion US dollars, your tax dollars. Vladimir Zelensky promptly went to Mario, the city of Mariupol on the coast of the Azov Sea and handed it to Renat Akhmedov, a Ukrainian oligarch. Akhmedov is going to use that money to build a steel mill and make more money. That was $1 billion in aid for the Ukrainian people. This is your money, your tax dollars at work. If Ukraine succeeds, Biden will no doubt set up Ukraine as his nest egg. It'll be Burisma all over again tenfold. Why would Biden do this? If Zelensky is successful, they'll have access to the second largest fracking fields in Europe. They have access to half of it now, and I guess that's not enough. What this means is he can bring Hunter Biden back over here and manage to grow the family fortune once more. For conservatives, I'm telling you now, if we don't stop this, what you see in America right now isn't just your present, it's your future, it's forever. When the, aggress when the Ukrainians decide to come across that line in force and they start massacring civilians, Russia will respond with force. So what if NATO gets involved? It's going to be a bloody mess and this conflict could expand across the world. If NATO gets involved, this actually might hit home. And I don't care if you're in Chicago or New York or Boston, where I'm from, um, this is a very, very serious thing going on. If you knew the kind of people that Joe Biden was supporting, you'd be horrified. You would not want to stand next to these people, never mind give them money. And the money that we're giving them right, giving them right now, they're pocketing it. All this is about to half the nationalist battalions in Ukraine is it gives them the opportunity to kill without any repercussions. They did this in 2014. And this can't happen. This is ongoing work, and if you'd like to sponsor it, um, contact me at this email, write sponsor in the subject line, and we can discuss the details. 
I'm going to be covering a lot of ground, providing a lot of information um, to subjects that have been plaguing people. And that's the reason I'm doing this. Um, most of these things I've really researched pretty far up to date. But we'll put them 